So in this video, we're going to be talking about how to set up tile sets and then creating ground tiles for our player to stand on. So we'll be creating a palette in Unity, generating tiles from the sprite sheet of the tile set. And then once we have ground, we'll be able to add gravity back in and a capsule collider for our player so that we can collide with the ground. I'll also be adding a composite collider to the tile set. I'll also be adding a composite collider to the tile maps so that when we walk across those tiles, we should never get stuck on each of the individual tiles. Okay, so to open up the tile palette window so that we can start working on a tile map, we go up to the window menu, go down to 2D, and then open up the tile pad window. So I like to dock this over on the right where we have the inspector. So I'm just gonna drag the window right onto the spot, left click, hold, drag, and let go to dock it there. And you can see we have a create new palette button and then this preview area is going to be where each of the individual tiles show up. And at the top, we have various tools for working on tile maps. So first, I want to locate in my project where I have the tile set PNG image. So if I recall, that would be under free cute tile set. And then there is this tile set image. So currently, this has not been split up into individual tiles. So we're going to need to left click on tile set PNG and free cute tile set go to the inspector, and we'll see that this tile set is in single sprite mode. We want to change that to multiple and go into the sprite editor. So we'll have to apply the changes since we put it in multiple mode. And now when we open up the sprite editor, looking at it, you can probably imagine that this can be split up into different squares, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. So these are 16 by 16 tiles. And so we need to slice this entire sheet up based on that size. So click on slice, change type to grid by cell size, and for the pixel size, do 16 by 16. And what you should see is these tiles are going to get sliced up perfectly. So we just need to hit slice and apply in order to convert the one image into a whole bunch of different individual images that we can use as our tiles. So you should see tile set 0 through 41 if you expand the tile set. Now in the tile palette, we can create a new palette. So this is a separate Unity asset from the PNG itself. And I'll just create it with a similar name. I'll call it Forest Tile Set, since that's basically what we're working on. And everything else, I believe we can leave as the default. So let's go ahead and hit Create. And now we'll need a folder in order to store our palettes. So I'm going to go to the Assets folder. Let's go into Art. And because all of the palettes are actually based off of images, which are going to be in the art folder, I think that this is a good place to put the new folder. And I would just call this palettes. So let's double click into there and hit select folder. So now the palette is stored in the palettes folder, but we're also going to need a folder to store tiles. So in palettes, I'll right click in here and let's do create a folder. And I'll call this tiles. So now I'll double click into the tiles folder and I want to create another folder so that I can keep all of my tiles separate. So for the forest tiles, I want to go into one folder. But if I add more tile sets in the future, I want to keep those separate in a totally different folder. So just maintaining the project, keeping things organized. Let's right click create folder and I'll call this forest tiles or forest tile set up to you. So now let's go to the free cute tile set folder. Let's find this PNG that has been split up, the tile set, and let's drag this onto the grid. So once you left click, hold and drag, you should see the white outline of where it's going to be storing everything. If you need, you can unselect it and control middle mouse wheel to zoom out here. That'll make it a little bit more clear exactly where everything's going. And now I can drag the tile set back into here. So you can see that this grid for the tile set can expand to basically any size. So if you want to add multiple images to one tile palette inside of Unity, you can do that. So I'm going to let go of my left click hold, and that is going to give us the prompt to generate tiles into a folder. So let's go to art, palettes, tiles, force tiles, and select this as the folder. So this will take the image, and for each of the split up squares, it's going to generate a tile asset based on this image inside of our tiles folder. So if I go into force tiles, you can see the actual dot asset files for these tiles. And those are what are being individually referenced here on the tile palette. So now if I have a tile map in my scene, 
I can use this tile palette window in order to draw onto it. But you can see there's no active tile map, so we can't draw yet. So we have to create a tile map with a grid. So uh, make sure you're in scene view so you can see what you're doing. And let's right click in the hierarchy and create a new, I believe it's 2D object, tile map, and then rectangular. Okay, uh, once you do that, you might be able to kind of see if you have the tile palette open that you can draw onto it. But let's make sure we're doing things correctly first. Let's click on the tile map, go to the inspector, and you'll see we have a tile map and a tile map renderer. So we don't have any physics colliders right now, which means that our player would be able to pass straight through it. So just to show the difference, let's go to tile palette and I'll click on one of these tiles and we can draw on the grid. So you should see that one square equals one size on the grid. If it looks way too small, then on your inspector for the tile set file, the pixels per unit might not be set to 16. So because it's 16 per unit and it's 16 by 16, that's why we have a one by one unit square. Anyway, uh, let's on the tile palette, use the tools. Let's use the brush tool with the square and draw some ground. Just left click and hold and you can keep dragging it around the screen like that. Control Z to undo, of course. Now in the inspector, we click on the tile map. We can of course see there's no tile map collider. Let's add gravity back in for the player. So I'm going to jump into the prefab for the player and where we have the rigid body, let's set the gravity scale to one and go back out of the prefab. So now I'll go back out, click on the player. Uh, we can see that the gravity scale is still set to zero here. So this is a custom value overriding the prefab. I'm going to right click on it and revert it to whatever the prefab settings are. So the bold text goes away and the value returns to the prefab's default. Now let's hit play. And once again, we can see we can just fall straight through the ground. The fix is pretty easy. So click on the tile map, add component, type in collider. And we're going to need to look for tile map collider 2D. So you add that into there. But you'll see that each of these tiles have their own collider in a sense. Because you can see the border on each edge of the tile. So that can cause some problems as your character kind of walks across it, especially if you're adding forces with it. So what I'm going to do is add collider and let's do a composite collider. And for the tile map collider, check used by composite. And what you'll see is that all of those lines between the tiles disappears. So now this is actually just one solid collider managed by the composite collider. So in a lot of cases, it'll seem like that doesn't do anything, but having a bunch of colliders between each tiles can cause some issues. So what I'm also going to do is change the rigid body 2D that's added in by this composite collider 2D, and I'm going to change it to static mode. This ground is never going to move, so we don't need it to react to any physics. So let's just close all of those. And if we hit play, our player is still going to fall through the ground. That's because our player does not have a collision shape yet. So let's jump into the prefab for the player, scroll down to the bottom, add a component, and let's go with a capsule collider 2D. So you might see kind of a circle shape appear around your player. If you scroll down to the capsule collider 2D component, there's this button, edit collider, click on that, and then adjust the size of the collider to whatever you think would be a sensible shape for the player. So I'm just gonna pull these sides in, I'm going to pull the top in as well, clicking on those little green dots. I'm going to make it a little small on the player. We may also be using this collider to determine if a enemy hit collides with the player. So you can see this adventurer, he has like a helmet area. Maybe I don't want to make it so that if an attack goes right above his head, that it actually collides with the player. So by reducing the physics collider shape, you can favor the player a little bit more than the enemy. Okay, so now let's go back out and... If we think our shape is here is good, let's we can hit play. And now when our character hits the ground, we should be able to see that it uh, does not pass through the ground because it is now colliding with physics. Now, if you have the capsule collider and for some reason you still go through the ground, make sure it's not set to is trigger mode. So normally it's a collision shape, but if you turn it into is trigger mode, then it's used more for detecting if something's in the zone, but not actual physics. So if I check is trigger, you can see character falls straight through the ground. So this would be more for determining like a player's hitbox with a sword attack later on. So now that we've verified that the tile map object is working properly, the character is able to collide with it based on physics, we can kind of go crazy with the tile set. So go back to tile palette and you can start drawing up a map using these tiles however you wish. So for these tiles on the left side, 
of this kind of floating platform thing. Obviously, those are going to be the left side of our main platform. So if you add those down, you'll be able to kind of generate the actual shape of your platform. You can see just by kind of selecting these and painting them on, you can really kind of create different shapes. So it doesn't need to be a copy paste of this own original shape, but you can actually left click hold and drag a box around all nine of these tiles if you do want to create platforms that are just exactly like that. So just left click and I draw all nine uh, tiles at once. I could do that a couple times even. These green outlines you can kind of see those are the physics shape for this platform. And there are other tiles here for more niche cases. So if I take this one from up there, you can kind of see I can curve around the ground. If you want to add a bunch of a single tile at once, you can use the filled box tool, you on the keyboard to select it. Then you can left click hold and drag a box to add a bunch of tiles. If you also want a tile to not have a physics shape, so the player can actually just walk through it and it's more of a background tile, then what you can do is you can add another tile map to the grid and not have any tile map collider on it. So if I right click on the grid and we do 2D tile map rectangular, I rename it to be no collision just so it's obvious. Now we click back on tile map and you can select the active tile map you want to draw onto. So if I don't want any collision, I just click on no collision. And now let's drag in a, and now let's just fill in some background tiles like this. Now this is also showing on top of the tile map below. So I can change the sorting layer. Maybe I take no collision and I just give it a negative one. And now it will show behind anything zero or higher in the order and layer. Alternatively, you can move stuff to their own sorting layer if you want to add those in. But let's hit play and kind of test. So we can collide with the ground, but if I go over to the right, this no collision layer, those are still tiles, but we're able to walk straight through them. So it definitely appears like they're more of a in the background tile there. Also note that if you have multiple tile map layers like this, you can also kind of combine them. So you can have two tiles layering over each other. And wherever there's any transparency on the top tile, the background tile can kind of come through a little bit. So that can make it a little bit more interesting as you're building out your game levels. Okay, so doing a little bit more play testing, you'll see that if I walk over to the edge with the player, that the player actually shows behind the wall sometimes. So I don't want that to be the case. So a quick fix for that would just be to take the order and layer and make sure that that's below the player. But if I want it to be consistent, then I probably actually want to use a different sorting layer. So I'm going to add a new sorting layer for the ground. I'll add it into this list. Let's put it between background and default, and I'm going to call it ground. So now if I click on tile map, I can uh, change the sorting layer to ground and no collision. Also change it to ground. So now this is negative one on ground, still going to show behind the main tile map. I could rename the tile map to be ground as well, just to make it a little bit clearer what that is. If I hit play now and we walk over to the left, you can see that when the player is coming up against the edge of the wall here, that it's still showing in front, which is probably what we want in most cases. So one last minor problem we want to fix before we exit the video, you can see the parallel background. It looks fine in general, but if we go down on the map, you can see that the background image kind of gets cut off here. So what we can do is just make the background bigger. So I'm going to take BG1 to BG3. Let's go to the inspector and I'll take the scale and set it to, uh, let's say, 4x, 4y. So now that's going to be much, much bigger going downwards. And we can leave it like that for now. I don't think I ever intend for the player to physically go below this point. So let's go ahead and hit play and we can move downwards. And we'll see that the background still exists here. It's only if we go much further down that the background would fall out of view. So if we walk around, it's generally okay. Got to make sure that there's some uh, background image here on the no collision layer so that we're not seeing green there. But aside from that, so far in testing, it's at least working for the most part. You might notice that if uh, you walk towards a wall while you're falling, that the character doesn't actually fall here. That's something we'll have to adjust in another video by checking if we're on the wall and making sure that we can't just stall the player here because that doesn't make any sense at all. But aside from that, this should be roughly where you end up in the video. You don't have to copy this exact map, just draw whatever you want using the tile maps. As long as you have working ground and uh, working collisions with the player in the ground, you should be good to go for right now.